Hello, True Crime and Makeup. So as you can see, I've already done my skincare for the day. Um, I have done my hair and added jewelry. So really, this is just about the uh, makeup aspect of it. So we shall just hop right in and get started. Herbert Mullen is an American serial killer who killed 13 people in California in the early 1970s. He confessed to the killings, which he claimed prevented earthquakes. In 1973, after a trial to determine whether he was insane or culpable, he was convicted of two murders in the first degree and nine in the second degree and sentenced to life imprisonment. As of 2021, he has been denied parole eight times and is unlikely to ever be released. Which, like, duh, totally not something that he should be released for. <laughs> and a terrible coincidence for the people of the greater Santa Cruz region, Mullen and Edmund Kemper overlapped in their 1972 to 1973 murder sprees, adding confusion to the police investigations and ending with both being arrested within five weeks or within a few weeks of each other after the deaths of 21 people. Sorry, I fell on the stairs earlier, so like my ankle hurts. So anytime I move it a certain way, it hurts me. Um, Herbert M William Mullen was born on April 18th, 1947 in Salinas, California. And his father was reportedly stern, but not abusive. Not long before Herbert Mullen's fifth birthday, the family had moved to San Francisco. Mullins had numerous friends at school and was voted most likely to succeed when he was 16 by his classmates at San Lorenzo Valley High. Mullen experienced difficulty in life at this time largely due to paranoid schizophrenia disorder shortly after graduating from San Lorenzo Valley High School. One of Mullins' friends, Dean Richardson, was killed in a car accident the summer after graduation in June of 1965, and Mullen was devastated. He built shrines to his friend in his room and became obsessed with reincarnation. In 1969, Mullen was admitted to Mendo Mendocina, Mendocina State Hospital. Over the next few years, he entered various mental hospitals, but was discharged after spells as being no harm to himself or others. In total, Mullen had been committed to five mental hospitals. By the time Mullen was in his mid-20s, he had a diagnosis of paranoid schizophrenia, which was accelerated by his usage of LSD and marijuana. By 1972, Mullen was 25 and had moved back in with his parents in Felton, California, in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Mullen's birthday, April 18th, was the anniversary of the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, which he thought was very significant. Mullins believed that the Vietnam War had produced enough American deaths to forestall earthquakes as a blood sacrifice to nature. Um, but that with the war winding down by late 1972, he would need to start killing people in order to have enough deaths to keep a calamitous earthquake away. It was for this reason he later said that his father, through telepathy, had ordered him to take some lives. On October 13th, 1982, Mullen smashed vagrant Lawrence Whitey White's 55 head with a baseball, but when the transient took with a baseball bat when the transient looked at the engine of his 58 Chevy station wagon after Mullen had pretended to have car trouble and pulled over, popping the hood. Whitehead offered to help fix his car in exchange for a ride. Just don't hitchhike. That's really all I've ever learned from all the research I've done on serial killers. Don't hitchhike. <coughs> Wait just a second. Sorry about the guy's salon guy showed up and I'm like, bro. <laughs> So I had to take care of that. Sorry. Anyway, where were we? 
Uh, White had offered to help fix his car in exchange for a ride. Mullen dragged White's body into the woods. His body was found the next day. Mullen's, Mullen later claimed his victim looked like Jonah from the Bible and sent him telepathic messages. Hey man, pick me up and throw me over the boat. Kill me so that others will be saved. End quote. Mullen killed his next victim after his father directed him to kill the second victim as a sacrifice and also to test the hypothesis that the environment was being rapidly polluted and an earthquake was nigh. The victim was a female hitchhiker named Mar Mary Margaret Goldfoyle, 24, whom he picked up on a highway. Mullen stabbed her through the chest while driving. He cut her abdomen open in order to test his hypothesis of pollution, took her organs out, examined them, and draped them on nearby branches so he could see them better. Her skeleton, skeleton, skeletonized body was only found after several months. Sorry, I am like having a difficult day here where I can't walk, I can't speak, I can't do much of anything without hurting myself or asking it up, so bear with me. On November 2nd, 1972, Mullins had doubts about the appropriateness of his father's instructions and went to see a Catholic priest in a confessional booth at St. Mary's Catholic Church in Los Gatos. He recounted that the priest, Father Henry Tomai, wanted to volunteer to be his next sacrifice. Yeah. He opened the confessional box and hit, kicked, and stabbed Tomai, who lay bleeding to death in the confessional while a parishioner watched Mullen run away. The parishioner ran to get help, but the witness description of a tall and thin man did not help the investigation much. Because apparently there's a lot of tall and thin men, so... Uh, thin men, not thin men. Jeez. So... Yeah, makes sense, I guess, why that probably didn't help them out any. <sighs> Mullen attempted to join the s Marines around January 1973, looking for a way to conduct his mission legally, but refused to sign a copy of his criminal record, and the Marines withdrew their offer. By January 1973, Mullen had stopped using drugs and blamed them for his problems. Now, my point when I was researching this and I was talking to my wife about what I was researching was that I could see saying oh I did all these things because I was on drugs and the drugs fucked up my brain but it really doesn't seem plausible if you continue killing after said drugs right like excuse me am I wrong here like because <laughs> I just feel like <laughs> You can't use that as an excuse if you continue killing after you stopped using the drugs, right? Just me? Maybe? I don't know. Oh, I forgot to put some steel around. Oh well, too late now. In early January 1973, Mullen drove to a remote area of cabins where he thought a former teammate who had first given him marijuana to smoke might live. The woman who answered the door was called Kathy Francis. Francis said the man he wanted to see lived down the road. In Mullen's memory, she also insisted that she and her kids, David, age 9, and Damien, age 4, would like to volunteer to be blood sacrifices. He killed them all with a pistol. Mullen had knocked on the door of his teammate's home. The teammate was unable to answer why he ruined Mullen's life with an early toke of pot, so Mullen shot him. Dying, the man crawled to his bathroom in an attempt to tell his wife to lock the bathroom door, but Mullen broke down the door and fatally shot her too. The police thought that the deaths in both homes were drug-related and did not suspect they were in any way connected with the priest's death or the previous murders of hitchhikers. I'll be back in just a minute. And we are back. About a month later, on February 10th, 1973, Mullen was hitchhiking in, or was hiking in the state park in Santa Cruz where he encountered four teenage boys, Robert Spector, 18, uh, Brian Scott Card, 19, David Oliker, 18, and Mark Dreibelbeis, 15, camping illegally. 
He walked over to him, them, engaged with him in a brief conversation and claimed to be a park ranger. He told them to leave because they were, according to Mullen, polluting the forest. However, they shooed him away and stayed in the tent. The next day, Mullen returned and shot all four of them in the head with the 22, killing them. When Mullen had finished, he took their 22 rifle and $22. Point 22 rifle. Sorry, I cannot read. Okay. Having an issue. The next killing happened before the bodies of his previous victims were found later that week. It occurred as Mullen was driving firewood in his station wagon. He noticed his victim, a retired prize fighter and fishmonger named Freddy Abby Perez, 72, working in his garden in Santa Cruz. Mullen did a U turn, came back down the street, stopped, put a few minutes. Put a few minutes after the description was broadcast on the police radio, a docile Mullins. Docile. That's what they say. They said he was docile. Um, a docile Mullen was ordered to pull over and arrested by a patrolman. In his car was the .22 pistol used to kill the people in the cabins. He did not attempt to use the recently fired 20, .22 rifle on the seat next to him. The police suffered from linkage blindness at the time. of Mullen's murders due to several factors. Firstly, the murders did not appear to be connected by a similar weapon or MO, modus operandi. Secondly, the victims, hold on, sorry. Secondly, the victims differed from each other in terms of age, race, and sex. And finally, Edmund Kember, who had killed the last of his own eight victims just a few weeks later, was operating in approximately the same area at the same time. Crazy, isn't it? <sighs> Mullen had committed his murder spree over four months. The Santa Cruz County District Attorney's Office charged Mullen with 10 murders and Mullen's trial opened on July 30th, 19, 1973. Mullen had admitted to all the crimes and therefore the trial focused on whether he was legally sane, which under U.S. law means that he understood the nature and quality of his actions and understood right from wrong. I don't think he really did. I mean, I think he, I mean, everybody knows the difference between right and wrong, but I don't know that he was actually what I would call sane because he thought he was doing this to help prevent earthquakes, <laughs> right? So I don't know that I would say that that thought process makes him sane. This is just my, my philosophy, but I don't think that that makes him sane because normal people don't think, how can I help prevent an earthquake and think, oh my God, if I murder all these people, then there will be no more earthquakes. People don't think like that. Normal people, sane people don't think like that. So, <laughs> I don't really think that he was sane, but that is just my opinion, and I am not a medical professional, so don't take my word on that. My dog is barking because they're mowing the lawn, just in case you can hear her in the background. <sighs> Mullen had, ad um, sorry. The fact that he covered his tracks and shown premeditation in some of his crimes was highlighted by prosecutor Chris Cottle, while the defense, public defender Jim Jackson, argued that Mullen's delusions made him kill. On August 19th, 1973, after 14 hours of deliberation, Mullins was found guilty 
of first degree murder and the killings of Kim Gyneria and Kathy Francis because they were deemed premeditated and eight counts of second degree murder and the other killings because they were considered impulse by the jury. Mullen um, was convicted of the 10 murders at the age of 26. He pleaded guilty to the second degree murder charge for Henry Tomai on December 11, 1973. He was sentenced to life imprisonment in the Santa Cruz County trial and has been denied parole eight times since 1980. He is, I can't speak English. He is currently incarcerated at Mule Creek State Prison in Ione, California. And that is where he will most likely, as they said, live out the rest of his life. And honestly, it's the best place for him that much is for sure just saying I will never understand what made this guy think yeah I'm gonna go murder a bunch of people and that's gonna that's gonna prevent all the earthquakes of the world but that's what happened and now he will rot in prison for the rest of his life for it so there's that <laughs> at least he's in prison right I hope you guys enjoyed today's segment and today's makeup look was for Disney's movie 8 Below. I hope you had a good time. Thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful day and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye!